As you know, yesterday was my birthday. I decided, among other things, to celebrate it by doing something that I haven't done in 45 years of living in Wisconsin. I went to the House on the Rock. You did? Yes. House on the Rock. Alex Jordan's weirdo building. Did you go on the partial or the full tour? Full tour, baby. You, you look like you've lost a lot of weight since the last <laughs> time I saw you, so yeah, you've taken a four-mile hike. For any of you who don't know, Alex Jordan was an architect who built a big house on top of a rock, and he decided to fill it with the world. And that's kind of what he does. I was half expecting to round a corner and see a portrait of myself. <laughs> I don't know if Alex Jordan is legally an architect. He was really more of an entrepreneur who wanted to be in Frank Lloyd Wright's club and Wright wouldn't let him in. But when Jordan was building the house on the rock, Frank Lloyd Wright stopped by because he lived just down the road. Yes, yeah, Tally Essen is very close to the house on Yeah, the seven miles away. <clears throat> Wright didn't like Alex Jordan and he's walking around looking at the progress and he says, Alex, there's only one thing to look at on your property and it's the rock. And you built your house in the one place where you can't see it. Those catty mid-century architects. <laughs> Hello there, weary traveler. You've stumbled into the Unboxing Show. This is a satellite show of Welcome to the Basement. We thank our donors, people who go to welcometothebasementshow.com and contribute. And we open our mail. There it is. This is from Chris from the Granite State of New Hampshire. Matt from sunny old England sends us this Cornish knocker golden ale postcard. He says, it's been a busy old couple of months. I've moved into my first flat and found a wonderful lass. Oh my God, what a time to be alive. Yeah, that guy's so English. Did you hear that <laughs> sentence? Matt, this is a great time in your life. You need to treasure it. Yeah. Love every day, because this isn't going to last forever. <laughs> I mean that in a purely realistic No, way. it's just the freedom of moving out on your own it is something that like makes you a little bit more handsome. And then... You suddenly find yourself with a lass on your arm. I remember when I first moved into an apartment that I had no roommates. Mm -hmm. It was mine. It was an efficiency. It had no kitchen. And it had cockroaches. And I loved it. And I got a couple other postcards that are from me to you from the house on the rock. <laughs> We've got the house right there. Look at that weird place. And here's a picture of the carousel room. Oh, the carousel room. That is just crazy. Our donors are as follows. Betty, Scott, David, Shannon. Don't do that. Sorry. I didn't mean to snap at you. That's all right. It's just it's dis distracting sometimes. Betty, Scott, David, Shannon. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> Betty, Scott, David, Shannon, Marie, Scott, Michael, Mario, Jennifer, Ann, Samuel, T.A., Mora, Melanie, Melanie, Victor, who says, why is Jeff Goldblum the way that he is? We just talked about that on our last episode. We can check it out. Abigail, Brian, Michael, Kelsey, Jason, Emily, Luke, Alfred, Roger, Shelby, Patrick, Cy, Reed, Martin, who says, Matt, how's your rewatching of the original Twin Peaks coming along so that you can finally watch the third season? And how about Craig? Is he really a Lynch fan after all? They doubt me. Mm. I guess I'm not. I haven't watched the new Twin Peaks yet. I finished watching the old Twin Peaks and the third season. Conan and I powered through it. Took us about a month, but we did it. The third season of Twin Peaks is an 18-hour roller coaster ride with David Lynch. So it's, it has its peaks and it has its valleys. Part of it is the old Twin Peaks that you know and love. Part of it is something new and better. Part of it is annoying. Parts of it are infuriating, and I don't mean that in a good way. Really, I think it's something that everyone should check out, and you should approach it with an open mind. That goes for you, too. I'll see it eventually. But if someone's questioning my David Lynch fanhood, I will not have it. I have a little YouTube update for everyone. I finally made an unboxing playlist. I have not done this through sheer laziness, but that has been remedied. You can see the link to that at the end of this video. Check out episodes of unboxing that you might have missed or that you want to revisit. Old Yeller was a fighter, a rootin' tootin' fighter. And whenever Yeller would toot, he would get kicked out of the room. The rooting was fine. While I'm gone, you'll be the man of the house. Yes, sir. I'll be the pigs to mark, fresh meat to shoot. And also beat your little brother on a regular basis. Make him into a man as well. But he'll be the man of the house after you move out, and he'll be, be able to beat himself. That's the circle of life, son. <laughs> Travis Smash. <laughs> Say, kids, are you enjoying this bucolic scene? Consider buying Bambi on Blu-ray. Looking out after you women folks and the young one sure keeps a man a-hopping around. Also, my peg leg keeps me hopping around. 
Think you ought to create a low hanging limb, but sit on a hog reach? I wish this character would leave. <laughs> big. Country. In the big country, dreams stay with you. Like a yeller's voice on a mountainside. Raccoon. Kid's gonna wake up in the morning stark naked. A raccoon's running off wearing his clothes. <laughs> I have written down here, old yeller gets his. Young Yeller is a puppy, a little old lop-eared puppy. It's plain to see he's got a family tree. He's a little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and he shares DNA. So we all know what's going to happen to this one. He's just going to have to be shot by Travis. Ooh. What? We know. And now viewer questions. Chris, in his New Hampshire postcard, writes, I'd love to hear your favorite film set in New England. Bonus points if it is in New Hampshire. What do you got? I would have to say, and I think it was set in New Hampshire, Ghost Story, 1980 or 81. All the old guys and the ghosts. Yeah, all the old guys and Alice Krieg. It still freaks me out all these years later. I believe that the world according to Garp is set in New Hampshire. I'm not positive about that, but considering it's John Irving, and his novel after that is The Hotel New Hampshire, maybe. Mm, it's on a coast. And New Hampshire does have around 25 miles of coastline. I don't know. Gabe Foster writes, Should I invest money into HBO? I don't know if all the shows on there are worth it or not. When I first saw your comment, I thought you meant, like, buying stock. <laughs> which I thought... <laughs> It's an odd question to ask us. Too bad he didn't get there in 1975. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you whether or not you should do HBO now. I do. And it does have some very good shows on it. Uh, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver is a great show. And it has one of my favorite shows that's currently on television, and that is High Maintenance. Are you familiar with this? No, I'm not. It's about a weed delivery man oh, and his yeah. various adventures. But it is not stoner comedy whatsoever. It's got a lot of heart and depth. Sometimes it's comedy, sometimes it's drama, sometimes it's both. And you never know what you're going to get. So it's, a, it's an excellent show. Atticus writes, Guys, please do a segment where you analyze at least one music video of EXOM or XOM. I'd look at Mama if you decide to do so. I sent you the link to this video weeks ago and asked we, you to a watch week it. ago. And asked you to watch it for this show. You couldn't be bothered. So I'm going to talk about EXOM. The song is called Mama. It starts out with this little 90 second kind of fantasy story. Narrated by this very English-sounding man. But the story does not make one damn bit of sense. I went back and watched it twice. I think it was written in Korean and translated into English by someone for whom English is a third or fourth language. I don't know what's going on there. But then we launch into the song, which is in Korean. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the story of that is either. But we have these five very pretty Korean boys. The song sounds pretty good. It's heavy. The thing I've always hated about boy bands is that they write songs for teenage girls. Yeah. And so the songs are just kind of trivial and not very interesting. But this is this is a real, like, heavy-sounding song. It rides a kind of a Led Zeppelin cashmere riff. Really? No, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah, that kind of thing. The video reminds me of the Zack Snyder film Sucker Punch. Oh. The one notable exception is that I like this video. It's just a big box of stuff that boys and men think is cool. These boys are dancing and suddenly one of them teleports. There's a dragon breathing fire. Oh, now they're all wearing skeleton makeup. You know, it doesn't seem to have rhyme or reason. It might if I understood the language, but it's it's a big box of cool nerd things. And Karen Hebert writes, which one is your favorite episode? I assume she's talking about our show. I don't have an answer to that, but I do want to start kind of a new feature on unboxing where we talk about episodes from our back catalog that we find particularly enjoyable and we encourage people to go and watch them, certainly in case they haven't seen it. I want to recommend an episode that is one of the best from season six, possibly the best, and it did not get the views that I hoped it would get, and that is the Valley of the Dolls episode. I believe Craig's baby was teething during that point, and so he had a very difficult time sleeping. And so things on the couch get a little bit loopy. <laughs> There's all kinds of talk of mobiles and water buckets. It, it's, it's quite strange. Yes. So if you have not seen that, you definitely should check that out. One of our viewers, Peter from Brisbane, Australia, sent us a huge Australian care package. And it had Vegemite in it. And another one of our viewers, Trev Voorhees, suggested we try it on the show. I've got some Vegemite right here on some crackers. And we're going to give it a shot. I have never had Vegemite before. 
It is rumored to be something that is impalatable people who weren't raised with it. Takes a little while to build out. It's so salty. Like, it's too salty. I was expecting that to be a lot worse. In Peter's snacks guide that he sent us with the care package, it says the brewer's yeast extract with various vegetable and spice additives. It was developed by Cyril Percy Callister in Melbourne in 1922. A lot of the things that we get in our P.O. box are records, and I want to talk about one of those that I recently watched. Watched? Yep, I watched it spin around in the turntable yep. while my ears listened to it, and it is the B-52's Funplex. When did that come out? 2008. Okay. Doesn't that look like fun? It does. It's like lots of stripes going on there. I have heard some late period B-52's, and I have, did not care for it. This is not bad. The f- first song in particular, Pump, uh, is quite good. Here's the problem with the B-52s. They came up late 70s, early 80s, and they're very similar to the Cramps. They probably came up in the Lower East Side of New York, although they didn't come from there. They watch way too much late night TV, they shop in thrift stores, and they don't care about anything modern. And so this informs their music. So when you listen to the early B-52s, you have this sense of fun and that it's a party, but there's also this sense of danger. And, and unpredictable weirdness. Listening to a song like Rock Lobster, there's even a little bit of menace to it. Yeah. Like there's this man shouting at me about all these fish. It, it sounds like the soundtrack music of old sci-fi or horror movies with very weird lyrics put on top that have nothing to do with horror movies. Yeah, and there's a mystery to them. Mm-hmm. The problem with post-Love Shack B-52s is they've gotten rid of all of the mysterious and dangerous stuff, and it's just the fun. Yeah. When I listen to albums like Funplex, they're just chasing after the next Love Shack. Mm. Which is a shame, because the B-52s, there was never a band like them before them, and there never will be again. It's basically like John Waters or David Lynch in music form. Yeah. Well, anyway, you could do a lot worse than Funplex. Plakages. We have two of them. This one is from Dustin in Ole, Washington. Ole. More records, I'll wager. This is from Christopher G. Hicks. Hi, Matt and Craig. Enjoy your gift. Thanks for the greatest show on the internet. From Christopher G. Hicks. It's a book by Christopher G. Hicks. Le Petit Mort. I know what that means. I do too. It's a book of poetry. Long, thin poetry. Actually, short poems written long and thin. Dustin says, this is from Dustin. I sent a few more records. Cheers. I am liking what I see so far, let me tell you. Because our first record is the Exploding Hearts. Oh. I love this album. They recorded this album, and then they were all killed. Except for one. Yeah, yeah one, one guy. One lived. This is an excellent album. I can't recommend this highly enough. How does Dustin know? Algorithms, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a, one of those mini CDs. Oh, my God. I haven't seen one of those since high school. They might be giants. So they'll need a crane. Jeez, this is... I wouldn't mall hung from a chain. Wow, this is, like, vintage. I think he was inspired to send this to us by our BMX Bandits episode, where we sang a little song by The Specials. Yeah. The Specials. Self-titled. Do the dog. Not the donkey. (laughs) If there was ever an argument for ska, it's Mm -hmm. The Specials. Oh, yeah, my God, yeah. (laughs) So much bad ska out there, but not these guys. This is a box of happiness right here. I don't know what this is. Hepcat. Right on time. He could, does look like a hep cat. This might be more ska. This could be reggae. I know these guys, but I'm not familiar with their music. Jawbreaker. Where are they from? Probably Washington. Possibly, yeah. Oh, look at this. They might be Giants. Brand new <laughs> album. Flood. My favorite They Might Be Giants song is Particle Man Twisting We Wanna Rock. They're all one song as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they might be Giants Factory Showroom. I think this is a really underrated album by these guys. I, I like it a lot. And lastly, we've got The Damned. This has New Rose on it. Top five best punk song of all time. Look at them. They got mashed potatoes all over their faces. Is that mashed potatoes? That's what it looks like to me. It could be pie. Could be. Like you know, those punks and their pie their fights. Pie, their pie fights, yeah. What can I say? This has been an, a successful unboxing. Let's look at this. Yes. We didn't have many boxes to unbox, but the two boxes we have are pretty solid. We hope you had a good time, as good a time as we had, and we hope you'll join us this coming Friday for the new Welcome to the Basement episodes, and now this. Look at all them stars, y'all. Bushels of them. wonder if maybe Papa's lying out there. Maybe Papa's in outer space right now. <laughs> Which star is Papa on? Where is he taking those steers to? We're on one of those firefly planets.